The coffee name has deep roots in the Big Ten, roots that go all the way back to 1986. Here's a look at just how big the coffee name is in the conference and the players carrying that legacy right now. When I first got the job, we had heard about uh, a young guy, Amir Coffee, as somebody that we needed to recruit. And the more that we kind of dug into the situation, obviously we found out that he had a father, Richard Coffee, who played here for Clem Haskins. I didn't know much about him, but then he asked around. He was a fan favorite. They called him the paratrooper, and everybody said he was one of the toughest guys, one of the best rebounders to play uh, at Minnesota. He's diving into the stands for loose balls. He was kind of the heart and soul of those good teams. I was minimum in, in skills and minimum in talent, so I had to find a way where I can be successful, so I just played really hard. Playing physical and, and playing strong and playing really tough defense and, and rebounding really well. I just love absolutely everything about it, and that's really why I got my kids involved in it. I remember playing basketball since I was born. Growing up, I had to try coop in my house, so uh, you know I was always shooting. He had passion for it right from the beginning. I saw the opportunity to train him from an early age, and that's what I did. Mia was a little different. She didn't want to play basketball in the beginning. I started track pretty young. I want to say around like the first or second grade, and I was pretty good at it, so I stuck with it. Then one day, I just hated running, and I started looking at my brother and sister, and they've been playing basketball since like kindergarten. I kind of felt left out, so. I decided to make the switch. So this is a gym at Grace Church and where a lot of hours have been put in by the kids and a lot of training has taken place in here. And it's just amazing for Grace Church and Pastor Troy to allow us to come here and train and to give us the opportunity to be in such an amazing place. We spent a lot of time in the gym. They sacrificed a lot and we would train. We would do a lot of dribbling drills, a lot of shooting drills. We were just there all day, from the morning to lunch to night. We were bringing snacks, we were bringing games. Cindy brought a sleeping bag. Like, we just brought all these things. So, you know, in between practices, we would have things to do, but it became second nature to us. You know, my dad was pretty tough on us, me and my two sisters. Some days we wouldn't want to go, but it was all out of love, because he saw the potential in us. He just let us know we wanted to be great. That's what it took. We were on the road, and uh, we were eating. Everybody's laughing, and. Uh, kind of making fun of Amir at the time. And I, and I said, what, what are you guys talking about? And they said to me, they said, Coach, who do you think is better, Nia or Amir? And uh, well, I said, no question, Nia is the better player. Two. Oh, we got two, we got two. Yes, I got you. In high school, I was a McDonald's All-American, a WBC All-American. I won a gold medal with USA. And my freshman, sophomore, junior year, I made the All-Big Ten team all three years. And you know, you see her now with 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds. I, every game we play, she breaks somebody's record. Last one, you got it, you got it. Here you go, finish on. What I love about her is she just wants to win. There you go. Here you go, keep it up, girls, keep it up! And you know, if we finish the year strong, she will be part of four straight winning seasons and four straight postseasons, which has never happened at Northwestern. Honestly, when Amir committed to Minnesota, I didn't really think anything of it until I saw his team pictures and I saw him in his jersey. Then I put the two together and I'm like, wow, we were really in the same conference. It's just great to see that, you know, we're both successful, like our hard work is paying off. This will be my first live game of Amir in college. She can wear a Northwestern shirt on the outside, but she better be leading maroon and gold on the inside just for that game, right? <laughs> just for that game. I don't have maroon with me, but I'm, I'm going for my brother tonight. Such a unique situation. We bring Christy back, and it was fascinating to me when you're watching that piece. You watched it as a parent. I did. You played at Maryland. Mm -hmm. Your husband, Jerome, played at Miami. And yes. so you were fascinated by how the coffee parents were raising their children after they had played in college. Right, and I, I think the key comment that was made by Mr. Coffee was that, you know, we saw potential in these kids, and he didn't force them to play, and he said that Nia didn't even really want to play. She was doing track initially, so 
to have them come into their own as players because they presented the opportunity to them and showed them how hard they have to work to get to that level, if that's what they wanted, I think that's commendable. And I think that was really special to watch. And just to see the camaraderie also between the siblings, I think that's also fun because, you know, Cheryl and Reggie Miller, they had their issues <laughs> when, when Reggie had 40 points and Cheryl gets in the car and said, well, I had over 100 points. I had 105. So Reggie just felt badly about that. So it's, it's different, but it's also a great family story and something that leaves a legacy, obviously, in the Big Ten. When I just recently uh, did a Northwestern game, I asked Nia about Amir. And, and I said, how do you think he's doing? And she said, he can do better. <laughs> See? He can do so much better. They know. There's that sibling rivalry. Right? Absolutely. Right? And, and here's, the here's the other fun fact. Richard Coffey, Nia Coffey, Amir Coffey, all lefties. I saw that. Team I lefty. Saw team Getting lefty. Getting it done in the Big yes, Ten. Yes, yes.